عباده الذين اصطفى فما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أم تريدون أن تسألوا رسولكم كما سئل موسى من قبل ومن يتبدل الكفر بالإيمان فقد ظل سواء السبيل ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم من بعد إيمانكم كفارا من بعد إيمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند أنفسهم من بعد ما تبين لهم الحق فاعفوا واصفحوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره إن الله على كل شيء قدير وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله إن الله بما تعملون بصير وقالوا لن يدخل الجنة إلا ما كان هودا أو نصارا تلك أمانيهم قل هاتوا برهانكم إن كنتم صادقين بلا من أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن فله أجره عند ربه ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أم تريدون أن تسألوا رسولكم Do you want to question your prophet كما سئل موسى من قبل as Musa was questioned earlier وَمَنْ يَتَبَدَّلِ الْكُفْرَ بِالْإِيمَانِ and whoever takes kufr in exchange for iman فَقَدْ ظَلَّ سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ they have certainly missed the straight path so this refers to when the Yahud or the people of Bani Israel asked the Prophet ﷺ yet another ridiculous question and they said that we will believe in the Qur'an when the Qur'an is revealed to us like Torah was revealed to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam all at once so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims and the Yahud as well that do you do you think you can ask those silly questions to this Prophet as well as you, you asked that ridiculous questions to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam the ridiculous questions the various things that they posed before Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, we've talked about them they want they said we want to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly we want to hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make something physical for us that we can worship all those stupid things so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do you think you'd be you want to ask those similar silly questions to this Rasul as well and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically telling the real problem that they have chosen kufr over iman and they have actually missed the missed the straight path. What the kathirum min ahlil kitab ilaw yaruddunakum min ba'di imanikum kuffara. O Muslims, now Allah SWT is addressing the Muslims. Many among the people of the book. So the people of the book at that time would be Nasara and the Yahud, the Christians and the Yahud. Law yaruddunakum min ba'di imanikum kuffara. They desire to turn you after your having accepted the fa- faith back into disbelieving or kufr hasadam min indi anfusihim and they do not do it because out of goodwill that they think that their faith is the right one and they want good thing for you but they are doing it because of their hasad hasadam min indi anfusihim all out of envy on their part min ba'di ma tabayyana lahum al haqq even after the truth has become clear to them fa'fu wasfahu hatta ya'ti Allah bi amri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims to forgive and overlook till Allah brings out his command in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir certainly Allah is all powerful over everything so these people after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these people would invite the Muslims towards kufr and they would in their hearts seriously want out of their jealousy to want Muslims to turn back to their old faith so now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told the people of Iman that this is their real intention and they are doing it out of jealousy or hasad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims to hold back for now. Fa'fu wasfahu. Do not go fighting against them. 
but forgive them and overlook that overlook this till when not forever but hatta yati allah bi amri until allah brings out his command so the commands of jihad the commands of openly fighting the kuffar the commands to shun the power of kuffar and the and the people who were increasing and cultivating fitna those came later so at this point allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the muslims to hold back and forgive and overlook these things and do not be angry openly angry and, and start open fighting with them so this ayah cannot be used to say that when the people are doing bad things to muslims allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us farfu wasfahu no that was for that time in in the same ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said farfu wasfahu hatta yati allah bi amri till the order of allah comes now in this day and age the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there wa aqimus salata wa atuz zakah and be steadfast in salah and give zakah the meaning of iqamat as salah to establish the salah as you said before is to establish salah with all with taking care of all the minute details all the minute adab proper wuzu proper time everything all the minute details of salah that means when you take care of that and then and then perform salah it means this is called iqamat as salah so wa atu zakah and give zakah وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whatever good you send forth for yourselves, تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ You will find it with Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Certainly Allah is watchful of what you do. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Muslims that for now the commandments are of salah and zakah and not of jihad. So if you're not, the Muslims wanted to do jihad, wanted to fight with these people. when their when their hypocrisy was open and when their evil intention was open the muslims wanted to fight but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that for now focus on salah and zakah and remember that whatever you send forth before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't don't think that it is small don't think that your salah is small or giving zakah is small and then since you are not being allowed to do jihad right now you are deficient in your deeds no this is this is whatever you send before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is good and when the order comes then you will be allowed to fight now one other aspect of these people that has been addressed in surah al-baqarah before as well allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing it again here wa qalu lan yadkhul al-jannata illa man kana hudan aw nasara tilka amaniyuhum they say that no one shall ever enter jannah unless he is jewish or a christian tilka amaniyuhum these are only their fancies amani is wishful thinking having wishes without knowledge qul hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqin say bring your proof if you are truthful so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than answering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly saying just ask them to bring proof where where do you get this from Where did Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala say that only the Jewish people or the Nasara the Christian people will enter Jannah? Where did Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala say that? Where is your proof? Just bring it if you're saying something, you have to prove it. Bala man aslama wajhahu lillahi wa huwa muhsinun fa lahu ajruhu 'inda rabbi wa la khawfun 'alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Of course, whosoever submits his face to Allah and is good in deeds will have his reward with his Lord, 'inda rabbi with his rabb. ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون they shall be no fear for such people nor shall they grieve again the difference between خوف and حزن خوف is for the future حزن is for the past as it is translated as there shall be no fear خوف as fear which is for the future and nor shall they grieve sorry yeah and grieve which is for the past something that has already happened so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this ayah in ayah number 112 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the spirit of all adyan and that is number 1 to submit to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bala man aslama wajhahu lillah the 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 literal translation is submits his face to allah submit to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and number 2 also has to be a muhsin wa huwa muhsin has to do good deeds so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all humanity here and telling them that this is the ruh of the right deen be it christianity be it jewish Ju- judaism be it islam be be you be you a, a christian or jewish or a muslim this is what you have to do that you have to submit before allah and do good deeds now if you are a christian or if you are a jewish person in 
submitting to Allah, it is included that you submit to the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ because you are not believing and following the commands of the Torah or the Injil in full if you are not believing in the last final Prophet of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in, in, in becoming, in, a, in Balam and Aslam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it is included that you submit to Allah, you submit to the Prophet, you submit to the Quran. And not only that, and this is particularly for Muslims as well, that not only that you have belief in your heart, but you have to show it by good deeds. وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ The second condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling is that you have to do good deeds. Only a belief in the heart is not able to protect you from what? Khawf and huzn. So huzn is whatever has happened in the past and khawf coming future of the, on the day of, here, uh, of, of um, judgment, the day, the life of hereafter. There will be fear upon you if your deeds are not good. And the explanation is that if you only have belief in your heart in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but have no good deeds, the rule is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put those people in Jahannam first to cleanse them of their sins and then put them in Jannah. So to, to be free of fear and grief, there has to be two things. Submit totally to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in letter and spirit and be a muhsin, somebody who does good deeds. So today we did from Ayah 108 to 112, 108 to 112. Inshallah, we'll start with Ayah 113. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, Rabbana wa lana wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, Allah make us from among the people of Quran, those who are special to you or dear to you. آمين يا رب العالمين صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه المعين آمين برحمتك يا رب العالمين